So for those of you joining us now, this is the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer broadcasting live to you some five miles off Pearl Harbor's entrance off the island of Oahu in Hawaii. We are diving on a World War II combat loss, a Japanese Imperial Navy Kohayoteki or Type A midget or mini submarine sunk by the United States destroyer Ward on the morning of December 7th, 1941, 75 years ago. The shots fired to sink this sub were the first fired by the United States in the Pacific War. These submarines built by the Navy had just come into use and were planned to be deployed by the Imperial Japanese Navy in swarms of 12 launched from seaplane tenders that would send them out to engage an enemy in an open sea battle. Instead, five were selected as stealth weapons to try to penetrate Pearl Harbor. Only one, as far as we know, made it into the harbor for the attack. Encountered and sunk by the destroyer USS Monaghan, it was later raised. Intelligence was gathered and it was then buried at the sub base. This submarine sunk by the ward was discovered by the University of Hawaii's Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory using the submersibles Pisces 4 and 5. The team that discovered those subs is joining us live from our University of Hawaii Exploration Command Center at Manoa. One other submersible was or submarine was also found in 1951 just outside the entrance to Pearl Harbor. Raised by the Navy quietly, it was in deeper water, and we will be diving that submarine later today. One other sub was found in 1960, just on the other side of the harbor entrance in Kehi Lagoon at a site now filled as an, an airstrip for Honolulu International. That sub, raised by the Navy, was returned to Japan and today is on display outside Hiroshima at uh, Edajima, the former Japanese Naval Academy. One last sub washed ashore on the morning of December 8th, having been able to pe penetrate Pearl Harbor. Its commanding officer and sole survivor, Kazuo Sakamaki, was America's first prisoner of war in the Pacific. His sub studied, dismantled, and then put back together toward the United States selling war bonds in more than 2,000 American cities. Today, it is displayed at the National Museum of the Pacific War in Fredericksburg, Texas. This sub that you're seeing is being offered for the first time as a live interactive dive. The work that NOAA's Office of Ocean Exploration and Research does using Okeanos Explorer, along with partners such as the Ocean Exploration Trust and the RV Nau EV Nautilus, Dr. Robert Ballard's organization, as well as the Schmidt Ocean Institute with the RV Falcor and others, engage in active, ongoing research in the oceans. Dives like this enabled by telepresence, that is, this remotely operated vehicle, this robot cruising along the wreck, driven by an exceptionally skilled crew here that we're working with, joined by the ship's crew, work in tandem to not only document these sites but stream them back via satellite and onto the Internet so that the public can watch and participate, but also so too can other scientists. So while we're looking at this as archaeologists, we have historians, we have oceanographers, we have marine biologists, geologists, and people from all over the world participating in a both scientifically efficient and cost-efficient way to explore Earth's final frontier, the oceans. Two-thirds of this planet is covered by water. Only 5% of it is known, and it's absolutely important that we know more about it. In particular, what you're seeing is a reminder that this is a vast undersea museum and on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack we're bringing you this starting as we did to the minute 75 years ago when this submarine was encountered and shot at and then sunk in the first actions of Pearl Harbor. This submarine most likely launched from the larger submarine I-20 was commanded by Akira Hiru with his petty officer Yoshio Katayama. Both of them still rest inside this submarine. It is a war grave and a memorial 
as well as a historic site. As we move into position here alongside the starboard hull and the conning tower, coming into view at the base of the conning tower close to the hull is the shell hole from the shot fired by USS Ward. We're just a few minutes away from concluding our dive and our tour of this sub, and we do so here where we began. At this place, ground zero, 75 years ago, in the opening shot of the battle for Pearl Harbor. The hit from the 4-inch 50 caliber gun fired by the crew of USS Ward punched through this hull at this spot. It did not go off, but rather exited through the bottom of the hull and as this submarine rapidly began to flood and go down, Ward's crew dropped depth charges, which sent it further on its way after reorienting it so that it drifted off to the side and sank approximately a mile distant from where Ward had encountered it. As we look at this, I want to remind us all that history lives. It's more than just something you read in the books. It's more than just dates or the names of big people, important people. We will always remember names like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Chester Nimitz, and others. But it's important we remember the names of those, particularly those still amongst us, like Will Lerner, one of the surviving crew members of USS Ward, who is ashore today participating in the 75th anniversary. The time is coming very soon at 75 years past these events when those who lived and witnessed it will be gone. And with that, they will be as distant to us in a way as those who fought in the Civil War. But as long as we do work like this, as long as we go to these places and visit them, as long as we remember what happened, the deeds, the events that led to them and what followed, then we will always be mindful, not only of this great generation and the sacrifices that they endured, but also the consequences of war, such as that which you see here. 75 years ago, at this very moment, Japanese naval aircraft launched from the carriers Kaga, Akagi, Hiryu, Soryu, Zikaku, and Shokaku were going over the island, mountains, lining up and dropping into Pearl Harbor. At that point, torpedoes fell into the water and began to rip into the sides of battleships as dive bombers fell and dropped their bombs, high-altitude bombers dropped up to low, unload their shells, and aircraft strafed the decks. Men sprang to action valiantly, seeking weapons to fight back and to save their ships and their shipmates. Ultimately, when the day was over, there would be a heavy loss of life. On behalf of the crew of Okeanos Explorer and all of our colleagues, I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to thank those who participated in the broadcast. It takes a very large team to make all of this happen, and indeed, there are so many we can't name everyone, but to all of you listening, to all of you who participated, thank you. And on this occasion of the Pearl Harbor anniversary, remembering that our former foes are now our enemies, we close with acknowledgments to all of you in Japan. Thank you all, and may we always remember the events of Pearl Harbor.